اهلا وسهلا ابو هاي خويين بين بين دو ويلكم تو اكسنت We are so excited to be back with the first international show produced at the University of Kansas. I am Teemu Lähde. And I'm Jay Kotsman, here to update you about what's been happening around the world. At least 40 people are dead after heavy rain and landslides in several coastal cities in Sao Paulo, State and Brazil during last weekend's carnival festivals. festivities. Hundreds have been left homeless. More than 130 rescue teams were looking for survivors after the landslides. A 180-day state of calamity has been declared in six cities in response to the heavy weather. It is feared that many tourists could be trapped in flooded areas. The Sao Paulo state's northern region attracts plenty of visitors during the carnival. Now, let's send it to Halen, who has more details on what's going on in Brazil. Halen, is it supposed to rain again in these areas? Good afternoon. A lot is happening with the weather across the world, starting off with Brazil uh, having quite a bit of some flooding and landslides this past weekend. That's all due to this excessive amount of rain, especially within parts of central and southern Brazil, where unfortunately people have lost their lives with these landslides and flooding conditions. But And it's looking like we're still going to continue to see lots of rain hitting in parts of Brazil. You know, Brazil's getting ready to transition over into their fall season, so it is not uncommon to see a lot of rain beginning to filter into the country but even taking a look across the ocean though we are we've been are going to be talking again about uh, Turkey in nearby Syria as they've been hit yet again with another strong earthquake about a 6.3 magnitude yesterday in a still devastate, uh, devastated devastated uh, rickened country right now but even just going back home we're not the only uh, they're not the only ones dealing with some insane weather and some uh, geological disasters we're dealing with uh, quite a bit of a blizzard going to the north of us especially in south dakota and minnesota so far going to be seeing estimates between five to possibly a foot of snow in uh, up into the north of us and even to looking back across the world uh, we've been also tracking tropical storm Freddy that it's actually has now hit uh, Madagascar right now and it's now weakened a little bit but still lots of a uh, little bit of some interesting weather around the world and even here back at home we still got a lot to talk about over the next couple of days starting off with tonight temperatures they're going to be plunging into those lower teens for this evening with increasing cloud cover but it is going to feel like zero degrees when we start the day for tomorrow and we're not going to see a lot of improvement just like today temperatures have been feeling like those lower 20s and going into friday we'll only see a little improvement we'll probably instead of feeling like those lower 20s we'll feel like those mid 20s for tomorrow afternoon but even still starting the day off you're going to want to layer up quite a bit but we will try to get above freezing once we get past noon tomorrow especially right around three to five o'clock so by the time classes are ending we should at least be in the 30s and not suffering too much with those bitterly cold temperatures but either way it's still going to be cold still feeling like those upper 20s for tomorrow afternoon as mentioned before we still have an active week ahead of us so even though we are going to be planning to warm things up this weekend we are going to be tracking our next disturbance going to be arriving between sunday night and into monday morning we've got this another trough ejection that's going to move through the area and this is uh, going to be an interesting system as it will be in the will be bringing the potential for some heavy rain showers and some much needed rain, especially in parts of western and central Kansas where they're still dealing with excessive drought. And even too here, we're still dealing with drought as well. So we need whatever rain we can get. But even though we'll get a lot of rain, there is the potential to see some severe weather for Sunday night into Monday. So far seeing a 15, per, 15 to almost 15 and 30% risk for severe weather for right now. But uh, of course things can change over the next couple Day. So we're going to continue to monitor to that as well. But lots of changes happening this week. So even though we're ending the week off in the 30s, we're going to be back up into the 60s going into the weekend, eventually by the first half of the week after that big system moves in. And we're looking to start off the first week of meteor meteorological spring uh, so far in the 50s with, East with some more sunshine on the way. Thank you, Halen. 
On Tuesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced he is suspending his country's participation in a nuclear arms reduction treaty with the United States. The treaty is a pact between the two countries to limit the number of deployed intercontinental range nuclear weapons that the U.S. and Russia can have. Russia's foreign ministry said the decision to suspend participation in the treaty is reversible. The U.S. Secretary of State called Putin's decision deeply unfortunate and irresponsible. The White House remains ready to talk about the nuclear arms treaty at any time with Russia, irrespective of anything else going on in the world. A severe lack of water in Venice, Italy, is making it impossible for the famous gondolas to navigate in the canals. Last July, Italy declared a state of emergency due to the water deficit. The longest river in Italy, the Foot Po, has 61% less water than is normal for the time of year. Scientists and environmental groups blame a number of factors for the drought. The lack of rain, a high pressure system, a full moon and sea currents. Next week, the career fair is happening at the Journalism School at the University of Kansas. It's a great opportunity for students to connect with the industry and learn about internships and job opportunities. But how can international students get involved? Steve Rodinghaus, Career and Outreach Coordinator at the J School, joins reporter Fernanda Silva to answer this and other questions. Thank you, Jake. Thank you so much, Steve, for having us here with us here today. Can you tell us a little bit what students can expect from the career fair this week? Yeah, a uh, week from today, we'll be overtaking Star for Flint Hall. We've kind of outgrown our space here. Uh, we're expanding to the third floor. So we'll have close to 30 companies wow. um, from Kansas City, Wichita, Topeka and Lawrence, um, pretty much anything you can think of connected to like the journalism curriculum will be represented. We'll have TV stations, uh, news media outlets, digital marketing firms, PR firms, communications firms. Um, and they want to they want to learn um, more about the Jayhawks and um, how they can help these companies. And how can students get ready for that event? Should they bring their resume? Should they bring business cards? What can they show to these companies? Yeah, if they have business cards, I highly recommend that. Um, definitely resumes. Like I said, we'll have close to 30 companies. There's probably going to be time to connect with all 30. Um, and it's a five hour event. I always tell students if you can devote like one solid hour, make some meaningful connections, you know, like with five or six companies. So if you bring like 10 to 12 resumes, you should be okay. I always encourage students to, if they have like a nice professional looking kind of what I call those pad folios that you can insert your resumes. If you don't have one of those, um, bring just like a kind of a generic folder just so those resumes aren't falling all over the place. Um, I encourage them to dress up like they would for an interview. Business casual at the very least, um, slacks, a nice colored shirt are fine. Um, if you wanna wear a blouse, dress, business suit, that's fine too, but business casual at the very least. I mean, try to dress to impress. And how can they kind of reach out to this company? Should they just stop by and say, hey, my name is Fernanda and I want a job? What is a yeah. good strategy for that? No, great question. Um, it's pretty common for like a student to walk up to the table and the person will say, Tell me about yourself. That's one of the go-to interview questions anyway. So I encourage students to have kind of that elevator speech ready where they talk about, uh, at the very least, their name, year in school, major, where they're from, and kind of their career interests. And then the conversation kind of takes off from there. Um, I encourage students to do a little research on the companies. You can find out information on our website, the Journalism School website. And just be familiar with like where they're located, what services they provide, maybe their mission statement, how long they've been in business. And then um, the conversation goes from there. And who is invited to participate? If I am a sophomore, a freshman, should I be joining the career fair? Yeah, underclassmen, there's tremendous value to that. It can lead to internships and jobs, but more than anything, the underclassmen can kind of learn what these companies are looking for um, in an employee, because it's pretty common where they'll make a connection, say at the fall career fair, and then they'll come back again, and they'll reconnect with that same company. And it's, it's neat to see that conversation happen, occur, because, um, yeah, the underclassmen get a lot out of it because they kind of learn what how they should be preparing. And again, it can lead to internships or jobs and just that general feel for what I should be doing at this time. And talking about the students who can participate on the career fair, how can international students get involved? Yeah, international students are definitely welcome. I would love to see more there. Each organization has kind of got their own like policies on like, um, you know, like the acceptance and like the paperwork that's involved. I always encourage students, the international students, if you want to visit like the International Student Services Office in Strong Hall to get more information about making sure they're prepared to like connect with employers, that's a great resource. Um, but yeah, they're definitely welcome. Um, and make sure they have that conversation with the companies and just ask like, 
you know, what is your policy and procedures and how can we make this happen? This show is called Accent because a lot of the international students like me have accents. <laughs> Do you think in journalism and communications, this is something that can kind of hurt students, international students to get a job here? No, I mean, I think most companies are very open to just diversity. I mean, they love that fresh mindset. So yeah, I wouldn't be too discouraged, you know, if you think an accent could be holding you back because um, especially these news organizations, I think we have 10 TV organizations coming. And, um, and I always say, like, it's more than just broadcasting, being in front of the camera. They're looking for uh, communicators, promotions people, sales account, um, anything you can think of that helps support a TV station. So, yeah, I would definitely not be discouraged, you know, if you think your accent um, could be holding you back, because I think they would be receptive to having more um, diversity in the workplace. A lot of students will be joining the event and they will be stopping by the tables of these TV stations or companies. How can you make sure that the company is going to remember you and how can you like highlight yourself in the middle of all these students? Well, the resume is a great start. Um, I provide each employer with a, like a Jayhawk folder. It always makes my day when I see them leave the career fair with like a stack full of resumes. So I think that's a great start. I mean, if you do have like a nice uh, business card, that's fine. I encourage students to like send them a thank you note hey, thanks for taking the time to visit with me. That's a nice touch point where they should remember you as well. Um, but yeah, great question. I mean, just keep that conversation going. I always like students to be respectful of their classmates' time. So if there are students behind them waiting to talk to that employer, you know, spend about a couple minutes and then move on. But if there's nobody behind you, hey, keep that conversation <laughs> going as long as you can. Or if you want to circle back later, um, I encourage that as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for all the great hands. And I'm oh, for sure going to be joining there. <laughs> yeah, one thing I want to mention too, we're also having a LinkedIn photo booth. So if you need a new headshot for like your LinkedIn profile, uh, portfolio website, that's a great place. And we're also going to have a breakout interview room, or excuse me, breakout resume review room on the third floor as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I hope you all join the career fair next week. Thank you, Fernanda and Steve. The Spring Journalism Career Fair will happen from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Thursday, March 2nd at Stafford Flint Hall. Sami Mabakum <coughs> Begum, who left London to join an ISIS terror group at the age of 15, has lost her appeal against the decision to revoke her British citizenship. citizenship. <coughs> The UK government removed her British nationality in 2019 on national security grounds after she made headlines around the world as an ISIS bribe living in Syria. Right. <coughs> Begum, no 23, will not be able to return to the UK and remains in a refugee camp in northern Syria. <coughs> After the break, details on Pope Francis's visit to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Accent. Pope Francis visited the Democratic Republic of the Congo this week. Over a million people attended Pope Francis's Mass at Kinshasa, and it was the first papal since 1985. The Pope's visit comes at a time when the African nation is suffering with armed fighting and a worsening refugee crisis. According to the UN World Food Program, 26 million people in the country face severe hunger. Pope Francis spoke with the victims during his visit and said he was left without words after hearing their harrowing stories. This week, I have prepared you a sneak peek into my lovely life as a Finnish person in the free state. Join me in my busy day right here at J School. Hello everybody, my name is Teemu Lähde and this is how my uh, Tuesday, February 21st went as an international KU journalism student. On Tuesday I had three classes, um, first at 8 a.m. It was JMC 304, media writing for audiences. We did some writing there, for example, and after that, I went on to wet fetch some breakfast. I really love string cheese. I 
took the breakfast uh, from the underground and had a second class at 9.30 30 a.m. it was 201 current issues in journalism about climate change and then I headed uh, to Walmart because I had to buy some groceries because I'm going to make some very special buns uh, on the, in the evening and then I took a power nap before my uh, third class uh, which was uh, at 2.30 p.m. and it was 408 media law and ethics I can really recommend that course highly because I think it's very interesting and yeah then I ate some delicious food uh, and also took um, takeaway and did some school printing and headed back home to make the buns so these buns are called in Swedish semla and in Finnish my native language um, laskiaspulla and they are traditional uh, fat Tuesday buns that originate in Sweden and for example I uh, did the whipped cream by hand it was quite a pain but in the end it was worth it because these were delicious and uh, my roommates loved these buns yeah thank you for watching man three classes huh <laughs> yeah i really needed that power nap at noon this week a south korean high court ruled in favor of a same-sex couple seeking equal health benefits the decision overturned a lower court's earlier decision denying rights to such couples south korea does not legally recognize same-sex marriage and this was the first ruling where the judiciary recognized the equal rights of same-sex couples lgbt organizations and supporters around the world celebrated the decision did you know that in Dubai you can find gold bars in ATMs? Find out more after the break. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back to Accent. Now I'm going to take you on a trip around the world with our fun facts. Australia is wider than the moon, by 600 kilometers to be exact. And while we're on the topic of the land down under, Australia is the only country without active volcanoes. I guess it's just everything else there that's trying to kill you. In Cambodia, they eat deep-fried tarantulas. In Venezuela, it was deemed unacceptable for kids to be watching The Simpsons, so instead it was replaced with the American TV show Baywatch. If you've ever dreamed of going up to an ATM machine and withdrawing gold bars, this is actually possible in the country of Dubai. In Singapore, it's against the law to chew gum, because the government used to spend over $150,000 a year cleaning it off surfaces. So, were you followed? What do it look like to you? Of course not. Citrus burns. 99% pure. In Bangladesh, if you're over the age of 15, you can actually go to jail for cheating on an exam. You're lucky the other guy passed math. Those are the fun facts of the week. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching Accent. We are going to be back in two weeks. See you then. Ciao. Ciao.